The Titleist RCT golf ball is more reliable. Trackman and Titleist have partnered together. We're going to be talking about the tech today. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm joined by Dustin Arnold. Dustin is a rep for the Northern Territory Plains, essentially. Yep. Um, and we're going to be talking about the RCT Golf Ball and TrackMan. It's a very, very exciting time. Absolutely. I know that we've got some great tech here working together. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, to give you a little bit of the, the story, um, this journey started uh, two, two and a half years ago with Titleist and, and TrackMan partnering uh, to create a golf ball that is uh, specifically designated for a TrackMan unit. So this journey started in uh, probably 2019, 2020, we actually had a prototype uh, that we were testing at the PGA show. And as we all know, uh, there's some uh, unfortunate, unfortunate circumstances throughout uh, the world, and that kind of put some delays on uh, what we were able to do with this golf ball. Uh, but through uh, years and years of testing and, and coming up with a variety of different patterns underneath the cover uh, for that uh, material to, to be reflective to the radar, uh, and, and again, testing with, with multiple facilities throughout the United States and throughout the world, uh, we've been able to come up with a golf ball that was released this week, uh, specifically designed uh, to work with TrackMan. The RCT stands for Radar Capture Technology, um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're here to show it to you today and uh, see what the results are. Yeah, RCT, or Really Cool Titleist. So yeah, so we both have the Pro V1 and Pro V1 X golf balls. Mm -hmm. These are the two models that Titleist is beginning with with regards to partnership. Um, so we at Second Swing, we will be using these in our, in our tour vans for all our, all our fittings. Um, so we rely on data as, as we, as we want to make sure we give the customer the best experience, fit them into the right golf club, Absolutely. right equipment and like that. So we're going to be testing today. We're going to be doing a little bit of test. Um, now, in the past, we've used a golf ball that's had like a silver dot on it. Correct. I want you to touch a little bit on that on that silver dot versus say the RCT golf ball. Let's face it, I mean the silver dot is still being very good inside, right? Correct. Yep. So there's no change in accuracy when the spin rate is measured. Um, so that metallic sticker that sits on a golf ball, uh, the disadvantage to that is it falls off, right? Uh, it's not positioned correctly. Um, so it does have to have some unique uh, things for it to work seamlessly. This golf ball, as you can see on the back of the, uh, the box here, has a specific pattern underneath the cover. Um, it is actually printed on top of a film that's on top of their core, uh, and this allows the golf ball to be placed effectively in any situation, uh, you know, any orientation, and it's still going to measure that spin rate at 99%, uh, the same as, as what, or, you know, if that dot were positioned correctly, same type of, of numbers there. Uh, but again, more reliable, less work on y'all's end, uh, less, you know, keeping up with making sure that that's in the correct position. Right, and then I know when I'm doing fittings, and one of the first things I, I tell the customer is make sure that goal, that dot is orientated in the right direction. Correct. Five swings later, <laughs> it's you know, the, they're hitting the face yeah, of the driver. It's, and you know, they're hitting the silver dot off because they're placing it right up against the club face, and then right. that silver dot's gone, and they just forget about it and forget about it. And, I think they're probably a little bit nervous. You know, they're coming in for a, for a fitting and they're trying to get fit, but they forget about the need for that silver dot being placed in the right direction. So Correct. now we don't have to worry about that with the RCT golf ball, which is going to be really exciting. Absolutely. Uh, so for today's test, we're going to do some testing. So mm -hmm. I, always, I always like to do the testing. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of different options. We've, first, we've got the RCT golf ball. Mm -hmm. We're going to be testing that versus the silver dot. So I want to see if there's any differences in, in numbers believe the consistency, we're talking about 15 RPMs, right? Correct, yep. when it's measured. When, it, when it's measured, yep. 15 RPMs. If it's italicized, I think, believe it's around about 200 RPMs Correct. is kind of guessing. Yep. So I want to test all three. I want to test the golf ball without a dot, with the RCT, and with the silver dot on the ball. 
and I want to see what happens. Definitely. And finally, I want to, you know, there's been a bit of a conversation with regard to spin axis. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to use the RCT golf ball here, and I want to maybe intentionally hit a hook, hit a drawer, and see how that measurement is with regards to the spin. So I'll hit some seven irons, I'll hit some drivers, and we'll see how the tech works. Perfect. All right, so Dustin, first off, I'm going to start off with the silver dot seven iron. Uh, so the silver dot's just going to play slightly pacing towards the screen. Um, slightly up facing towards the screen. Correct. Yep. That was left. Not too far left though. Yeah, and you can see, I mean, just having to put that, that forward position, be cognizant of that each time, it, it's right. not a, a huge out of the, the way thing to do, but it's an inconvenience. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do it every time. Uh, I've done it for such a long time now that I'm, I'm used to just positioning that ball in, in the right yep. direction, but I do have to bend down as opposed to, I guess I could just kind of drag it, but it takes, takes a while Correct. to get it in the right spot. So yep. yes, it's a little bit extra, a little bit of inconvenience to have to get that in the right position, but the spin rate and the spin axis were not italicized. Correct. Two measured numbers so far. A little lower, yeah. Yep. There we go. Still all, all measured so far to this point, though. Right. Which is yeah. good to see. So we can probably pull up those four shots just to kind of take a look at those and just show that we had, we had nothing there that was like italicized. Absolutely. Everything was measured accurately. So yeah, 6381 spin yep. axis. Negative 6.9. Negative 6.9. So to the left, another one to the left, 6169. Um, we go, yep. The that one, one left the right. face. I mean, just a little push block. And actually, the ball's going to spin a little bit more on that shot. Yep. The spin axis actually was positive, so it was to the right. Certainly. And then uh, 59, a little bit more of a, of a drawer, and a little bit more of the numbers that I'm any more used to seeing. Yep, but, yeah. absolutely. All right, so uh, we, know that we know that Silver Dot works. There's, there's right. no doubt about that. It, it works, uh, it's consistent, it's measuring accurately. Yep. Okay, so before we do the RCT, I'm just curious, because I actually haven't really hit without the Silver Dot. Yep. So I'm actually curious to see what happens here, just to see if there's you know, that impor importance for that. Certainly. With the seven iron. Well, am I expecting it to see it, to see it italicized? Or? Um, with, with the amount of ball flight that you have um, in this room, we should see, I would say, more uh, measured than we do uh, italicized, okay. which are calculated. Um, but that's one of the benefits of the new golf ball design as well, is we can now small, uh, make a smaller footprint within the bays to create a, uh, a more enjoyable experience, more reliable numbers right. for our, our clients in homes or you know, that don't have the, the depth that maybe we do here. Yeah, that's important to bring up because I think we're about 12 feet from here to the screen. Correct. And a lot, of, a lot of home systems that they have, they've got maybe 10 feet. Certainly. And that doesn't have enough time for that ball to calculate going towards the, the screen. Yep. Yeah. Um, so without this, we need about a, a revolution and a half to start measuring the, the spin. So um, when we get into driver, we might see some different results, but I would say with seven iron, we should see some, some measured numbers. Okay, sounds good. Good move there. So both yep. measured. Right. Yeah, and then it also will come down to how fast a person's swinging too, right? Absolutely. Like if a golfer has less speed, it's going to probably take longer for it to get to that screen, and then probably a good chance it's, it's probably going to be measured even without the silver dot. Correct. Right. Yep. Same thing, I guess, as a 7-iron versus a driver. Exactly. For yeah, me, at least. You start getting into faster swing speeds regardless of the club, and that's where there's less time uh, or less spin happening in those initial moments of flight. So um, yeah, absolutely, we should see some, some slower swing speeds still measured, even with driver in a space like this. Okay. And I gotta ask you here too, does it matter on the golf ball as well with regards to measuring 
without the DOD or, or with, the, with the DOD or anything like that? It, uh, no. Because I know this not. is focused on the RCT bull a little bit more, but say I you know, have a customer that maybe wants to play, say, a TP5 yeah. or, or something like that. Does that make a difference premium or versus maybe like a, a Torsoft or something like that? It does not. Doesn't? No. Okay. So it's, it's, we're able to, to measure or to um, use the radar to see the information uh, regardless of ball type. Um, so I, I always like to say you can even go down to Florida and use floater range golf balls uh, and it was still able to measure that spin as long as we're able to get a certain number of revolutions before it hits whatever object it's going to hit. Perfect. Good. So, okay, yeah, so we take a look, maybe bring up the, the table of the shots comparing those. What I found interesting there was um, it did pick up every single shot accurately. There wasn't any um, italicized or problems with measurements or anything like that. Definitely. Environment is good. So I've always said, I've responded to a lot of comments and saying as long as the environment is set up really well, TrackMan, it's great. You don't have to maybe even worry about that silver dot at times. Correct. Yep. yep, and lighting play, does play a factor in that. As, as you know, we've introduced what we call OERT tracking, optically enhanced radar tracking. Um, so that now allows the camera to be used with appropriate light, which we have in, in your bays here at Second Swing. Um, we have that ability to, to help in those uh, visuals of, of what that ball okay. is doing. So um, yeah, environment does play a, a huge factor in what we're able to measure versus when we're sometimes maybe calculating. All right. I think both options there, dot or, or no dot, uh, club speed was about the same there on average. Maybe just take a quick look at the averages there and, yeah, and so see. So you know, 6357, 63.54. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 89.2, 89.2. Yeah. And our spin axis, well, we had that one that went a little bit right um, on, on that, but um, you know, plus or minus yeah. two and a half, plus or minus 3.6 with a positive one. I'd say those are pretty in line as well. Right. Um, Very good. All right, so let's, uh, let's hit the RCT ball now. I guess I was picking that up naturally. I don't need to worry about where, the, uh, where it's pointing anymore. <laughs> Correct. Uh, no, no, you know, uh, <laughs> mark on the golf ball that, right. that tells you any kind of orientation. Uh, you do see the logo, that RCT logo on the golf ball. That will be on every Pro V1, Pro V1X that has the, uh, the pattern, the metallic pattern underneath the core or the cover. Um, so you, you'll know that you're hitting an RCT golf ball um, versus hitting a regular Pro V1 or Pro V1X. And, and in our works with Titleist, um, you know, one of the, the main points of, of what we want is we want a golf ball, and as, as well as Titleist, we both want a golf ball that per performs the exact same uh, as a Pro V1 or a Pro V1X. Um, so they did a lot of testing and durability. Can it last the same, you know, 250 shots indoors, 500 shots outdoors, if we can make it that long with right. a golf ball? <laughs> I've never tested that. Uh, so it, it allows for, uh, or, or the goal was to create a golf ball that, that both performs and uh, has the ability to work with the technology. And one other point is, is this golf ball is USGA legal. Um, so you can take it out and play in a tournament with it. Uh, so if you have a, a, a simulator or access to one and you utilize this golf ball, guess what? You can take that out onto the golf course and, and use it the same as you would indoors. I, I'm glad you bring that up because I didn't, I didn't realize that was the case. I, I would have thought maybe it was just for indoor sim only. Yeah. Obviously, you'd pay a little bit more for that Pro V1 or Pro V1X, but uh, it is the same bowl. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Look at that, 89.2 on every single average for all three. Yep, that is, <laughs> it's control is what that is, it's something I lack.
All right, so as we can see, we've, we've hit four shots with each version of the ball, with the dot without the ball, and the RCT as well. Yep. Not a single shot, actually, interesting, not a single shot, either one of any of them. Yep. No m wrong measurements, every, nothing was italicized, whether it came to spin rate or even the spin axis, which is, which is good. Absolutely. It means my environment is good. I'm very happy I trust this because you know, I play professionally and I want to make sure that I rely the, on the data. Certainly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, maybe a little surprised that, that we didn't see one, maybe two uh, italicized numbers on the no dot. Uh, but again, like you said, the environment is, is perfect for uh, what we need to do indoors uh, for, for the technology to track uh, and, and measure that information. So Right. I mean, we're looking at these numbers real quick. Um, we were just saying, like, spin rate. People might say, oh, the spin rate is lower with the RCT golf ball versus the other two. There's so many things that can go into that. I mean, you can see I had a little more ball speed there. My efficiency was a little bit better. Uh, my attack angle was probably a little bit different. There's just so many variables that go into it. But all we can say is it was, it was measuring it accurately and also face angle, just where the ball's going, how it's flying. It's just, Absolutely. yeah, it's gonna be different. I might have caught one here, I might have caught one here. There's just so much that goes into it. So yep. the good news is we know this data is accurate. It's measured accurately, regardless of whether we had the dot on it or we're using the RCT ball. Yeah, you can, you can rely on the data um, regardless of, of the golf ball that you're using. Having the RCT is only going to help be more confident in, in the numbers that you see in front of you. Uh, and then, like we've discussed, as we get into these faster speeds, now we'll, we should see a little bit more of a, a difference in regards to the, the way things are measured versus calculated. Um, and, I, and I think that's where we'll see some nice surprises with the golf ball. All right, well, that's it, some drivers. Absolutely. Love it. We're good. Love that shot. Still a towel size on the spin axis. Spin rate's measured. Interesting. So with it being, say, italicized on the spin axis, it's not telling us it's, it's way off, right? It's, it's just a good estimation, or how does, how does that work? Correct. Yeah, it's, it's just not... Uh, as confident as we need for it to be a measured number. Um, so I, I would argue that that ball is exactly what you would expect That's exactly to see outside. I would have said it was just left of center. Yep. 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 So it, it's the, the information is still reliable when it's not measured. But again, getting into the faster swing speeds, we're going to see more uh, uh, italicized numbers on that spin axis especially, just because that is a, ch a more challenging number to read in such a short distance okay. with that type of speed. Yep. That was some decent speed there for me. I went after that one. Uh, yeah, 115, that's moving. And it's also a sub 2000 spin rate, yep. which is, uh, you know, that, that's one that's always a challenge when you're at that speed with that low of a spin rate. And that's kind of where the golf ball comes into factor. A lot of tour players, a lot of professional players like yourself, they have that combination, and, and that's why they're so efficient with the driver in their hands. I didn't hit that one as well. Right. That one was italicized. So italicized spin rate, but measured spin axis. Yep. And that one, it felt like I hit it kind of out here on, on, on the toe side. The face a little open on there, but yeah, it was measured spin axis. Spin rate was italicized. Yep. But what's interesting is even though that spin rate was italicized, it's pretty much the same spin as the last two shots. Correct. So, I mean, I know we say it's around about 200 RPMs is the, is the, is the accuracy number. Mm -hmm. I can probably rely on that. Definitely. Yep. yep. There's one. There we go. Both measured. Nice. That was Beautiful a nice controlled swing on. there. Yeah. Measured, measured, very good. Yeah, and I would say the additional spin, we see we got over 2,000 on that one. Um, that's gonna help with how we're able to measure because there's more rotations happening. It's, you know, minuscule in that yep. amount of distance. But, Couple hundred RPMs, uh, yep. But yeah, definitely, definitely helps in, in how that measurement's able to happen. Okay. Um, and, and to the point of, Slower swing speeds, uh, you know, looking at that, that accuracy level, maybe pull up uh, the, the 
uh, table view here. So with that driver, plus or minus 122 RPMs, uh, that's insanely low on, on terms of how accurate and, and uh, consistent right. that, uh, that spin rate is. So most of your amateur golfers would dream to have uh, you know, a spin rate within that consistency level. Um, but that's where it's important to have measurements on those spin rates rather than the calculations is a, a player that's not at your caliber knowing exactly what they're doing, how far that ball is going to go, I'm sure helps substantially in the fittings that y'all do. Oh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> that's, you know, that's a, a key piece of why, again, this golf ball has, has been co-developed with Titleist over the last few years. All right, we got one there that is italicized on the spin, but it was not italicized on the spin axis. Yep. All right. Interesting. So two unmeasured or two calculated spin rates, uh, and then two measured spin axis. You're just too fast. So yeah. it's it's having a tough time. Now I will I will also say, um, you know, spin rates on these have been lower than the others before. Um, we also see the spin loft is, is a smidge lower, especially on that one. Um, so that could be throwing a, a bone in there and just that all sub 2000, no dot, it's having a tougher time having a tough time. read yep. that. But um, again, I would, I would argue that these numbers are reliable enough for player your caliber to go out and, and trust that that's what you're going to see on the course as right. well. I mean, we're talking still about 200 RPMs. Correct. I mean, we talk about that, that range there. And the carry distance, I'm looking at the average carry distance is about 289. I think that's what it was when I was hitting the, the ball with the silver dot on it anyway. Certainly, yeah. So, 4 right. and 0, 0 and 4. 0 and 4 with the spin, but 4 and 0 with the spin axis. Yep. Yep. So pretty good. All right, and then even if you're going to look at those, like carry numbers, for example, versus each other. <laughs> exact same. Uh, that, that, is, that is crazy. Yep. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Spin rates, you do notice a <laughs> couple hundred RPMs lower. Yep. Um, spin loft, uh, a little higher, actually. Yep. Um, now, I do know that one of those you mentioned was a little off the toe, and that kind of helps knuckle it. But yep. um, again, Within that range of, of what we're saying we're comfortable with in terms of measurements versus calculations, no dot on the golf ball is within that 200 RPMs of the one that we did see more measurements of. Perfect. Well, now let's go to the RCT ball. This is what I've been waiting for to, to see. Absolutely. Good there. I mean, again, the exact same yardage to, it, to the point. Yep. Um, that, that we've seen before, measured spin rate, uh, spin axis uh, italicized, so calculated there. Yep. Um, so my club path was three degrees in, uh, basically the exact same. Yep. Um, I must have hit that just slightly on the toe of the club. Yep. That's why that's saw that saw that gear effect, bring yep. it back, and could see some some uh, calculations going on there. Yep. Really, I mean, not much curve at all, but it's no. just a couple of feet. There we go. There we go. I got one over 289, finally. <laughs> <laughs> got one more yard. Yep. <laughs> and, and spin rate, again, on the low side, uh, sub 2000 measured, spin axis on that one measured. Um, so more, more confident in what that one was doing. Um, yep. But yeah, I, great numbers there. Yeah, that, was, that felt like a better swing. Beauty. Yep, that was a good one there, too. There you go. Beauty. Yeah, so four, four, four 
what we anticipated on measured spin rates. Uh, three of four on the spin axis measured. So I'd say, uh, again, the golf ball having that, that uh, metallic underneath or, or the, the radar capture technology underneath the cover uh, now is making it more reliable in the data that you're getting. Right. Um, not any more accurate than what we were seeing before. Uh, and, and we can pull up those views that we were looking at earlier uh, in that regard. Um, so, you know, very consistent across the board uh, with, with the data that we saw. Um, you did see without a sticker, it, it did go down a little bit. Um, but I would say uh, numbers wise and carries and, and what we were seeing elsewhere uh, was pretty consistent there. So. Right. I mean, you're talking here. Even if that spin rate is it italicized, we're talking within one yard or almost not. I mean, basically the exact same number. And this is driver. This is going. This is carrying 290 yards. Yep. Very, very accurate. Correct. Yeah. Regardless of whether you have that dot on it or RCT ball or even without the dot, if it's if it's estimating in a good environment, yep. It's going to be very accurate. Is what we're seeing here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's awesome. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted you to kind of touch a little bit before we're done on that on that spin axis again. Just want to understand that a little bit more. There was the one shot when we had the when we had the um, RCT ball that was italicized. Do you think that's just a little bit to do with it didn't pick up like the hit location Correct. on that particular shot? Yep. And yeah. That's what it was? So we we do use the uh, the information from outside of the spin axis, or I'm sorry, the uh, impact location. Um, to help us with that spin axis measurement indoors. Um, so not seeing where on the club face the ball was struck on that shot can certainly impact uh, our confidence in giving you a, a spin axis number, yep. um, it, which is where that italicized can come from. But even with it being italicized, I'm 100% confident. I know that that's an accurate measurement still, even if certainly. it is italicized, is what, uh, what I'm kind of saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, just, we weren't able to confirm what we saw per se, in that first 12 feet of, of flight, what the radar was able to uh, measure with that, and we weren't able to confirm that with the impact location number there. Okay, perfect. Now, it's a good way to answer that, and yeah, I, like I said, I'm fully confident that yeah. numbers, you know, my, my numbers are very, very accurate regardless of what golf ball, whether I had the silver dot or not on it. Um, we will be using the RCT golf ball, tight this Pro-V1 and Pro-V1X here at Second Swing Fittings. Um, so I'm excited for that reliable d data yeah. uh, at all our stores or our, or our locations. So if you are interested in coming in for a, uh, a second swing fitting or a tour van fitting, come on in to any of our stores. Um, Dustin, thanks so much for Absolutely. joining today. You, uh, you covered a lot of stuff, TrackMan related stuff, our RCT bull stuff there too. I know it's great to have a partnership with you guys and a partnership with with Titleist here as well. Um, we know that the technology is great and we really rely on it and it gives quality data, so. Great to hear, yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing how this golf ball can help in, in the fittings here and uh, help players in Minnesota become better at their games.